guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering this TikTok craze about taking liquid chlorophyll for acne. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. What is chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is a plant pigment. It's what makes plants green. <laughs> Hence why I wore this shirt today. You're welcome. And it also can protect against DNA damage. Now on TikTok, people are taking liquid chlorophyll claiming that it helps their acne. It's actually chlorophyllin, uh, a water soluble form of chlorophyll, the plant pigment. And this type of product, supplement, what have you, has been around for a very long time, well before the advent of TikTok. And many people take it uh, claiming that it's going to help detox the body. Ordinarily, I roll my eyes whenever anybody says detox. <laughs> However, there is a little bit of truth to this. What? Uh, chlorophyllin supplements have actually been shown to limit the bioavailability of alpha toxins. Chlorophyllin is uh, an antioxidant, so it can help uh, fight off free radical damage from exposure to any environmental uh, carcinogens and it also has this ring-like structure. It's thought that maybe it can kind of bind up some of these things and again, limit their bioavailability. So there is actually some truth to the detox claim about this ingredient. Uh, and it has been demonstrated that it limits the bioavailability of uh, carcinogens. Um, so I'll list all of my references down below if you guys wanna read more. All right, but what about for acne? All right, first of all, you have topical chlorophyll. Uh, stuff that you put on the skin. Now, truthfully, there are no like studies of putting chlorophyll on your skin for acne, but it is antibacterial, it is anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, logic follows, it could potentially help with acne. So you will find it in several over-the-counter acne products, including the line BioClarity that I have used and talked about and promoted on here before, and it is, you know, they have some good products. Anyways, I digress. But what about taking liquid chlorophyll or chlorophyllin? Chlorophyllin is a photosensitizer, and there is a small study examining using chlorophyll A as a photosensitizer for the purposes of something called photodynamic therapy for treating acne. What the heck is photodynamic therapy? It is a type of treatment we use in dermatology to treat skin cancers and a variety of other skin conditions. It involves administering a photosensitizing agent, either applied to the treatment area or given to the patient systemically. Once that photosensitizing agent is allowed to accumulate into the given tissue, then the area is treated with either blue light or red light. And this results in something called photoactivation and the generation of singlet oxygen species and subsequent death of the, the type of cell that we're trying to kill off in the diseased area. Now, photodynamic therapy has been used to treat acne successfully because photosensitizers accumulate in the oil gland. Chlorophyll is a photosensitizing agent that can be used for the purposes of treating acne and was shown to be effective. So should you be taking liquid chlorophyll for acne or chlorophyllin? No, um, this is merely used to make the visible light treatment more effectively and it's used under controlled conditions. Uh, taking a photosensitizing uh, agent can be very damaging to your skin. Uh, chlorophyllin can accumulate in the lining of the blood vessels in your skin and it can cause rashes, burning, stinging, redness, blistering, a photosensitive reaction. Chlorophyll is present in the foods that we eat. Uh, green, specifically spinach, broccoli, green leafy vegetables. So you can get chlorophyll from your diet. However, if you take it in a supplement form, it's the equivalent of like eating like 10 cups of spinach or something all at once. And it's very, very concentrated. That can accumulate in the tissues and cause photosensitivity. I'm not making this stuff up when it comes to the chlorophyllin supplements. It is well established that chlorophyllin supplements are a known cause of something called pseudoporphyria. What the heck is that? It is a skin condition in which individuals are become sensitive to light because of something that they are taking or exposed to. Uh, this can be observed in people who are undergoing uh, dialysis, people with chronic renal failure, 
people on certain medications, and it has been observed in people who use tanning beds. Uh, and we don't always know why it happens. In some conditions, it makes sense. Patient is taking something that is photosensitizing, it accumulates in tissues, and then they have this, what's called pseudoporphyria. How does it present? Painful blisters on the backs of the hands. Uh, it can uh, not only be painful and have blistering, but you can have redness, you can have swelling, and you can even have numbness on, on the backs of the hands, in, in particular is where it often shows up. It's called pseudoporphyria because porphyrias are a group of hereditary diseases of porphyrin uh, heme metabolism that makes people very sensitive to light. But you can kind of get a pseudoporphyria state uh, triggered by certain medications, and in this case, chlorophyll and supplements. This has been well established, well documented in case series, case reports. And the treatment for pseudoporphyria, of course, is stopping the offending agent. So for example, if a patient is taking a medication that triggered a pseudoporphyria, we stop the medication. Yeah, basically the uh, photosensitizing agent, it gets concentrated in the, line, the cells that line the blood vessels. And then when you're exposed to light, visible light, like indoor lighting can trigger this. Uh, it creates tissue destruction and you get these blisters that are painful, you have redness, you have swelling, and you can have numbness. Now this isn't gonna happen to everybody, but it does happen, and it probably is uh, going to happen more likely the longer that you take this, because it could accumulate in those tissues. Um, we don't really know that much about the pharmacokinetics of these supplements, and supplements are not drugs, they're not regulated, so the dosage, etc., is, you know, it's gonna vary from company to company, and companies are not really required to do any standardization and present that in a uniform way like an over-the-counter medication. Um, so it, it can be problematic. It could potentially accumulate uh, in your skin and cause a photosensitive reaction. Now for people uh, who experience this, not only is it painful, not only do you have these blisters, uh, there's also a risk that it could scar you and that it could cause hyperpigmentation that either doesn't fade or takes a long, long time to fade. And that's particularly more likely if you are somebody with a medium to deep skin tone. Um, that is an adverse reaction that is more likely in those skin types. In the case of pseudoporphyria triggered by uh, cl uh, chlorophyll supplements, uh, it's not often as simple, it's not always as simple as just stopping the medication. Some patients have been reported to still have photosensitivity up to six months after stopping the supplements, suggesting that something in the chlorophyllin maybe binds to um, blood vessels or red blood cells, causing a more prolonged manifestation of the, of the pseudoporphyria. In my opinion, it is much better to derive the benefits of chlorophyllin in terms of its antioxidants, uh, you know, free radical scavenging, etc. simply by eating green leafy vegetables. Consuming high concentrations of one component of a food often can result in problems, and this is one such example. Uh, just because it is natural, just because it comes from a plant, doesn't mean it's safe to take in concentrated amounts for a prolonged period of time. Yes, in the case of acne, it has been shown to be beneficial, but the reason it's been shown to be beneficial is because it makes, it's a photosensitizing agent, so it's only beneficial in patients undergoing photodynamic therapy. So it's not as simple as, oh, this is gonna help acne. The reason that study showed it was beneficial in acne is because it's part of photodynamic therapy, which you shouldn't just be DIYing yourself without the supervision of a dermatologist. Uh, because again, you can have blistering, uh, redness, painful reactions, and if you take this long-term, it can potentially accumulate in the lining of your blood vessels, triggering possibly a pseudoporphyria. That has been reported. It is a well-established risk of taking this. This is also a problem in ruminants. Uh, you know, cows can get uh, photosensitivity by the chlorophyll uh, causing photo, being photosensitizing. I mean, it's actually originally reported in the veterinary literature, I believe. Uh, so it's not just, you know, problematic for people. You know, it's not something that 
you should be taking in high levels, in my opinion, based on this potential risk of a photosensitivity, which is not something you wanna mess around with. Uh, and in my opinion, a far safer way to obtain some of the benefits of chlorophyll is simply by eating leafy green vegetables like spinach, broccoli. Uh, these, are, these are much better ways to get this beneficial compound into you rather than these very high concentrated levels in these chlorophyllin droppers, supplements, etc. I'm sure I will get comments that I am just a puppet of the pharmaceutical industry and that is why I am cautioning against chlorophyllin, but those of you who are here for an evidence-based answer, I will put my references down below documenting the uh, cases of pseudoporphyria from taking uh, chlorophyllin supplements including the individual who had symptoms six months after stopping. Not something that you want to be dealing with. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.